Chapter 4 Every day Snowball sent out pigeons to neighbouring farms. Tell all the animals about our glorious rebellion, comrades. Teach them beasts of England. By the late summer, news of Animal Farm had spread across half the county. Most of this time, Mr Jones spent sitting in the Red Lion at Willingdon, complaining to other farmers. I've been kicked off my property by a pack of good-for-nothing animals. The other farmers sympathised, but they did not at first give him much help. Each of them was secretly wondering how to turn Jones's misfortune to his own advantage. None of the farmers wanted their own animals to learn too much about the rebellion on Animal Farm. At first, they pretended to laugh at the idea of the animals managing a farm for themselves. Animal Farm? What a joke! It will always be Manor Farm. The whole thing will be over in a fortnight. They're already fighting amongst themselves and starving to death. Months passed, but Animal Farm showed no signs of imminent collapse. The farmers began spreading new, darker rumours. I hear there's cannibalism, and they torture one another with red-hot horseshoes. They share their women too. It's disgusting. These tales were never fully believed. Competing rumours of a wonderful farm where animals managed their own affairs continued to circulate. Throughout that year, a wave of rebelliousness ran through the countryside. Bulls suddenly turned savage. Sheep broke down hedges. Cows kicked their milk pails over. Horses threw off their riders. Beasts of England were sung everywhere. Even the blackbirds whistled it in the hedges. And the human beings listened to it. They secretly trembled. Early in October, the pigeons raced back to the farmhouse with dramatic news. Jones and all his men have entered the five-barred gate. They're coming up the cart track. The invaders were all carrying sticks, except Jones. He was marching ahead with a gun in his hands. Preparations had been made. Everyone get into position, cried Snowball. Every animal was at his post as the men approached the farm buildings. Snowball signalled the launch of the counter-attack. Pigeons flew down over the heads of Jones and his men. Then the geese, hiding behind the hedge, rushed out and pecked viciously at the calves of their legs. While the invaders were fighting the geese off with their sticks, Snowball launched his second line of attack. He rushed forward, followed by Muriel, Benjamin and all the sheep. Together they prodded and butted the men from every side. Benjamin turned round and lashed at them with his little hooves. But the men, with their sticks and steel boots, soon seemed to get the upper hand. A sudden squeal from Snowball signalled a retreat. All the animals turned and fled through the gateway into the yard. The men gave a shout of triumph and rushed after their enemies. This was just what Snowball had intended. Three cows and the rest of the pigs were lying in ambush in the cowshed. Once the men were inside the yard, the horses suddenly emerged, cutting them off. Snowball now dashed straight for Jones. Jones saw him coming, raised his gun and fired. A sheep dropped dead. Without halting for an instant, Snowball crashed into Jones's legs. Jones was hurled into a pile of dung and his gun 
flew out of his hands. This shall forever be known as the Battle of the Cowshed, cried Snowball to great cheers. The flag was run up and Beasts of England were sung several times. For the fallen sheep there was a solemn funeral and a hawthorn bush planted on her grave. At the graveside, Snowball made a little speech. We all must be ready to die for Animal Farm, he said. A new military decoration, Animal Hero, first class, was awarded to Snowball and Boxer for their bravery. This would be worn on Sundays and holidays. Animal Hero, second class, was awarded posthumously to the dead sheep. Mr Jones's gun was found lying in the mud. It shall be fired twice a year, Snowball announced. Once on October the 12th, the anniversary of the Battle of the Cowshed, and once on Midsummer's Day, the anniversary of the Rebellion. <laughs>